All right, sorry, I've got started about two minutes late, but it is just after 6 p.m. We're going to go ahead and do our evening Bible study this uh, tonight. We're going to be in Psalm 1. I had uh, sort of planned to just finish up the notes I wasn't able to work through this morning in this morning's message tonight, but um, decided sort of last minute to uh, share some things with you that I had uh, jotted down from Psalm 1 in my... Uh, daily reading so find Psalm 1 I'll excuse me I'll find it with you and if you're listening there's Sherry she's listening wave at her real quick all right uh, Psalms then Proverbs and then Ecclesiastes you want to find the book of Psalms right after Job if you turn to the middle of your Bible, you'll be fairly close. Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. There's Miss Barbara Ratliff. Wayne Albright and Tom Buttry are watching. Hey, Tom, hope you are feeling better, brother. And y'all think about Brother Tom. Please pray for his back and the pain, uh, his back pain. I know that he appreciates that. Psalm chapter 1. All right, we're going to read all six verses. It's a fairly short psalm. Uh, I've been teaching through the psalms on Sunday nights, or rather on Wednesday nights, and we're all the way, we've, we've touched on every psalm from 1 all the way to 83, so we're moving along. Uh, so it's been quite some time since we looked at Psalm 1, but I want to look at it tonight, okay? And just to kind of give you an idea what we'll be talking about tonight, uh, three things to not do, two things to do, five results if you'll follow those instructions, and then one contrast, okay? So Psalm 1, you can be looking for those things as we read, blessed is the man or the woman, that is the person, blessed is the person, who, what? Blessed is the person who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let's just say a brief word of prayer and you pray with me, okay? Father, we thank you. We love you. We ask now for your help. You said this morning in your word that uh, wisdom is available for the asking and we ask for it tonight, Lord. Give us wisdom as we look down through this passage. Fill us with uh, the wisdom of God, the grace of God, the goodness of God, and show us your favor. As we study your word tonight, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, so uh, the title of tonight's message is Be a Tree, Be a Tree, or How to Be a Tree. This is the image that we have here in Psalm chapter 1, verse number 3 says, He shall be like a tree. Now, it doesn't specify which kind of tree it does specify that it's a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit so we'll talk some about that but uh as as to the exact kind of tree it doesn't say me personally i just like to think of an oak tree an oak tree you say well an oak tree doesn't bear fruit well of course you can think of its uh, acorns and its leaves as fruit of sort uh, but the idea is that it's strong and that it prospers, and uh, we kind of use that as a um, as just sort of an analogy. An analogy when we say someone's an oak, we say they're strong, and I want to be an oak. Amen. I want to be strong. I'm not near as strong as I'd like to be. Um, of course, not uh, not near as strong as I uh, 
are much stronger, let me put it that way, than I would be without Christ. Amen? He is my strength. And so, with his help, you can be an oak, and I can be an oak. And so, let's look at this passage and talk about, think about, how to be a tree. Okay? So, as we uh, said already, there are um, three things, at least three things here, that the passage says, if you want to be a tree... If you want to be strong, if you want to be an oak, three things that you need to practice not doing, okay? Three things you need to decide, that's not me anymore. That's not going to be my life. I'm not going that way. I'm not going to do those things, okay? So let's look at those three things. And the first uh, one, well, all three of them are in verse number one, and you see a progression in these three things. You see the word in verse number one, walk, and you see the word stand, and you see the word sit. So you see, I said progression, it's really more of a digression. You see a person who's walking, and then he stops, and he's standing, and then for long, what's he doing? He's sitting, okay? So now the passage, of course, isn't saying don't walk, don't stand, don't sit. <laughs> uh, you've got to do uh, one of those things, don't you? Walk, stand, or sit. But uh, what is it that he doesn't, or how is it he doesn't want us to walk, or where is it he doesn't want us to stand, and where is it he does not want us to sit? Okay, so let's see those three things. Number one, if you want to be blessed, verse one, the, the blessed man, three things he does not do. He does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Listen, folks, if you want to be a godly person, if you want to be strong, if you want to be a tree, if you want to be an oak, you've got to uh, be careful about where you get your counsel. All right? And now let's not too narrowly define counsel here, okay? Don't, don't think this just means who do you go to for advice or where do you get, whether it be professional counsel or friendly counsel. It's not just... Who do you go to to talk to when you need help? Although that would be included. The idea is, who are you walking with? Because listen, folks, who you do life with is going to affect you drastically. Amen? Do you believe that? Who you do life with is going to affect you drastically. Because you're going to... Um, to be listening to them. You're going to hear them. You're going to get their perspective. You're going to begin to understand their world view. And so you've got to be careful who it is you choose to walk through life with. Okay? So in other words, he's talking here really about a path. If you want to be a tree, if you want to be an oak, if you want to be um, fruitful, in this life and strong in the Lord. You've got to make a decision who, what path you're going to take and who you're going to walk with. Because listen, sp certain people take certain paths. That's just the bottom line. I was uh, playing disc golf last week. Who was I with besides Enoch? Uh, I think it was David Terlecki. Uh, he may be watching. Um, and we come across a raccoon out in the middle of the day. There's David watching right there. Um, David and I and Enoch, we were uh, disc golfing. We come across a raccoon in the middle of the day. He didn't look too healthy. Uh, he looked like um, a little dazed and confused, maybe. But you generally don't see a raccoon out in the middle of the day. And, and so it kind of make you nervous. You don't want to uh, probably uh, try to approach him. But... Um, what was he doing out in the middle of the day? Because that's not usually when raccoons get out and do what raccoons do. They're they're part of the nightlife, see? And so um, it was odd to see him in the, in the daytime. And so the Bible's called you and I to walk in light, not to walk in darkness, as a raccoon generally does, but to walk in light. And listen, you're not going to get a lot of light when you're walking with those who walk in darkness. So number one, Three things not to do if you want to be a tree, if you want to be an oak, if you want to be strong in the Lord. Number one, don't walk with the ungodly. That's the advice here in verse number one. Second, don't stand in the path of sinners. All right? 
So we've talked about this path. You've got this, uh, um, the ungodly, they walk a certain path. And what Psalm 1 says, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly and don't stand in the path of sinners. Now, does this mean that if sinners are at Walmart, we can't go to Walmart? Of course not. Does it mean if sinners are at the ballpark, we can't go to the ballpark? No, it doesn't mean that. What it what it means here, remember the digression we've talked about, walking on the one hand, and now this person stopped walking and he's standing, okay? And you get the idea that he's observing and he's taking in, he's standing in the path of sinners. And as, as much as we want to impact the world as Christians, we have to be careful about that path of sin and we don't want to get comfortable there. All right, so you go somewhere and you see a sign that says no loitering. Don't just be hanging out there. Don't get comfortable there. And the Christian has to be careful where he loiters or where he uh, uh, gets comfortable. And this guy, he was walking along the way, taking in the counts of the ungodly. Now he's standing in the path of sinners. He's being influenced by people who do not love God. They're ungodly as opposed to godly. Godly people, they love God, they think about God, they obey God, they serve God, they want to know God, they study the Word of God, they gather with the people of God, but the ungodly are different. They're sinners, okay? They're, they don't, uh, they're comfortable with sin. You know, they, they're comfortable uh, using foul language, they're comfortable um, at the... Uh, bars, you know, getting drunk, they're comfortable lying, they're comfortable cheating, they're comfortable in their immorality. Immorality means very little to them. They they don't think in the same terms that Christians think about think about morality, which is the um, what the word of God teaches us to abstain from sexual immorality. But the ungodly and the, sin, the sinners, they're comfortable with those sorts of things. And the text is saying, if you want to be a tree, if you want to be an oak, if you want to be strong in the Lord, don't uh, walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Don't stand in the way of sinners. And then finally, don't sit in the seat of the scornful. Okay? Now, the scornful, they've gone beyond just not having God in their life, being ungodly. They've gone beyond being comfortable in sin, this digression, they now are, they, they scorn religion. They scorn Christianity. They mock uh, Christians. They'll make fun of you for doing the right thing. They'll make fun of you, teenagers, for uh, waiting, not being sex sexually active, sexually immoral. They'll make fun of you for the way you spend your weekends. They'll think you're crazy for going to church instead of going and doing whatever with whoever. Uh, and they're, so they're scornful. Um, they, they've got, they've got the counsel of the ungodly. They've got comfortable in sin, and now they're comfortable even making fun of those who are devoted to the Lord. So, if you want to be strong, if you want to be an oak, if you want to be a tree, then you've got to practice a certain amount of separation. We can summarize those three things: walking with the um, ungodly, standing in the way of sinners, and sitting in the seat of the scornful. Practice a certain amount of separation. Decide who are going to be your people, who you're going to do life with, how you're going to uh, live, where you're going to be comfortable. And, and this is the way to be strong in the Lord. This is the way to be the blessed man, as verse number one says. Okay, and then now there are two things to do. Two things to do in verse two. We've talked about three things you don't want to do if you want to be an oak, if you want to be a tree. Verse number two, the things that we need to do, the Christian, it's not just about what he doesn't do, but what does he do that really matters. So his delight is in the law of the Lord. See, this guy who wants to be an oak, wants to be a tree, wants to be strong in the Lord. He delights in God's law. He loves the word of God. If you want to be strong in the Lord, you're going to need to learn to love the word of God. That means you're going to want to read it. That means you're going to want to understand it. It means you're going to want to think about it, which is the next thing. The two things, number one, is love God's Word. And number two is meditate day and night in it. 
So you're going to want to hear God's word. You might hear it on CD. You might hear it on Christian radio. You might hear it uh, on the television. Oh, you've got to be careful, some of those guys out there. But uh, you may go to church, and you should go to church. That's God's plan for your life, is for you to have a pastor, a te some teachers, and to hear the word of God. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So says the book of Romans, okay, in chapter 10. So the guy who's strong, he's a tree. How did he get so spiritually strong? He began to love the word of God. See, he said, I don't want the counsel of the ungodly so much. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to live life. They don't have it all figured out. But he's found in the word of God some answers to life. He's found in the word of God some stuff he can grab hold on. He's found truth. And the truth has set him free. And he loves the truth. He hungers for truth. As David in Psalm 63 said, hey, get me to the sanctuary, man. I love the truth. And so he delights in the law of the Lord. Now listen, he's not sitting around uh, hating that um, it's time for church or uh, despising the idea that he got to spend some time with God. He loves the word of God. He wants to know it and understand it. So uh, it's it's got in his heart. See, he delights in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on it uh, throughout the day and into the night. He's thinking about the things of God. Okay, so if you want to be strong, if you want to be a tree, if you want to be an oak, don't waste your time walking with the ungodly, standing in the way of sinners, or sitting with the scornful. Instead, get your counsel and your advice from the Word of God. Love it, read it, love it, hear it, listen to it, meditate on it day and night. So to, to what we were saying this morning in this morning's message, think about it. You can't just read it, you got to think about it. And uh, it's, it's critical and essential to your life to think about what you've heard or read instead of just forgetting it. Amen? So... All right, that's three things to not do. That's two things to do. And then let's look at the results. If you will follow this advice, there are uh, at least five things here in Psalm 1 that you can expect to happen. All right, so moving right to the next verse, verse number three. Number one, you will be strong and healthy and well-nourished. Doesn't that sound great? Strong, healthy, and well-nourished. Look at verse three. He shall be like a what? like a tree he shall be like a tree what kind of tree planted by the rivers of water okay so this tree is well nourished it's got all the water that its thirsty roots need it brings forth its fruit in its season okay so the first result is you'll be strong like a tree that's well nourished second you will yield fruit and you will begin to show signs of life okay this is not a tree whose leaves are dead this is not a tree that's not bearing any fruit but this is a tree that because it's well nourished by the word of god it's healthy it's strong you see signs of life here okay its leaves are green it's it's bearing whatever fruit this particular tree is supposed to bear it's bearing those fruits in its season, its leaf shall not wither. Whatever he does shall prosper. So the third result you see here is prosperity. Prosperity. Oh, Brother Aaron, I didn't know you was a prosperity preacher. Health and wealth and prosperity preacher. Well, in this sense, yes. No, I'm not that preacher who's going to tell you if you love God and send me your money then uh, everything will go well for you and you'll be healthy, wealthy, and wise. No. But uh, I'm not going to deny this teaching either that if you will not do those things which you shouldn't be doing, instead do those things that you ought to be doing, love the Word of God, meditate on the Word of God, make it your guide for life, it will lead to a certain amount of prosperity. Your soul, and that's what we're really talking about here, the blessed man, his soul, his soul will prosper now you'll prosper in many ways as the uh, verse sort of indicates here whatever he does shall prosper god will help you to uh, follow a 
path of prosperity. Now that makes sense, right? Because God knows what is good. God knows what is right. God knows what works. And for those who love him, love his word and follow him, he will lead them down that path of prosperity. Uh, not that God wants all of his children to be rich. He, he clearly does not. Because we can look through the Bible and see many of his uh, servants who weren't especially rich. Uh, and, and you listening today, you may love the Lord and delight in his law and, and you aren't especially rich. Um, I like to uh, believe I fall into that category, although I will say I'm uh, doing better than I deserve. God's been better to me than I've ever deserved and I'm grateful to his goodness to me. Uh, and he has given me a certain amount of prosperity uh, in my soul and in my life in general. God is good. Amen? All right, so uh, he'll make you strong, healthy, well-nourished. You'll yield fruits and signs of life. You will, uh, God will lead you to a certain amount of prosperity. And then look at verse number six. Verse number six uh, implies that God will... Uh, watch over you in a special way. You'll have a certain special watch care over you. So read verse 6 with me. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the, uh, but the way of the ungodly will perish. See the contrast there? The ungodly are going to perish, but the, the righteous, see, God knows your way. The idea, excuse me, sorry about that. The idea is that that God is watching your way, that he is leading and guiding you, that uh, he's leading you in the way that you ought to go, and God favors and blesses and watches and protects his special uh, people, those who are in Christ. All right? And then finally, one other thing that will be the result of living for the Lord and loving uh, his word and uh, not doing those three things we said don't do, doing those two things we said we ought to do, one further result is that you will stand at the judgment. Again, it is implied here in verse number five that the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. The ungodly shall not stand. They, they won't have a leg to stand on. They will fall um, either backwards or they will fall on their faces before God, but they simply will not be able to stand at the judgment, um, nor sinners in the congregation of who? Of the righteous. So you see, the implication is that the righteous will stand at the judgment. Praise God for this, that, that because of Christ in me, because uh, I've loved him because he's come to live inside of me because I've trusted him <clears throat> at the judgment one day. I will be able to stand. I'll be able to stand before God and I will stand with Christ and in Christ. The ungodly, not so. They're, they're just not going to have a leg to stand on because they refused to give their heart and their life to Christ. But those who are in Christ, we're going to stand at the the judgment. We're not going to stand in the way of sinners, verse number one, but we are going to stand in the judgment. So you see, again, this parallel here. Those who stand with sinners in this life will not stand with the righteous at the judgment. But those who stand with the righteous in this life will stand with Christ at the judgment. So, I want to stand at the judgment. Amen? Don't you want to stand at the judgment? I hope and trust you do. Now, this is not to say that we won't bow at the judgment because certainly we, we will bow and worship and throw our crowns at the feet of Jesus when he, when he does reward us. But the, the idea here is that when we stand before God to be judged, we will be able to stand in confidence confidence not in how we lived our life not in that we were good but that we trusted christ and we loved his laws and we followed him and because of him in us we can stand at 
the judgment. So you have two kind of people at the judgment. Those who can stand at the judgment and those who will not be able to stand the judgment. And I want to be the former. Amen? Don't you? All right, and then finally, uh, you have this, uh, this contrast going on here. The righteous and the wicked or the ungodly. All right, remember, so look at verse number four. The, the first three verses are about the righteous, the, the blessed man. And, and how he, the things he won't do and the things he should do. But then verse uh, 4 and following, the last three verses uh, draw the contrast between him and the ungodly. We would said in verse number 1 that the, this godly man, the, uh, this guy wants to be a tree, he wants to be strong. He doesn't receive the counsel of the ungodly. In verse 4, the ungodly... They're not at all like the righteous, okay? Um, where the righteous will prosper, what the ungodly will have is destruction. That's the last verse, verse 6. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. All right, so you have prosperity and you have perishing. Which will it be for you? Will you prosper for all of eternity? Will you prosper because of your faith in Christ, because of your love of the Lord, or will you perish in all of eternity because you rejected God, because you preferred to walk with the ungodly, to stand with sinners, to sit in the seat of the scornful? My friend, I've chosen to get my counsel from God and from the Word of God and to love His Word and to meditate in it day and night, and He has made me strong and healthy and well-nourished, uh, yielding the fruit of righteousness. He's blessed me in more ways than I can imagine, and he watches over me, he cares for me, and he's promised that I can be sure that I will stand in the judgment because of my relationship to Christ. The ungodly are not so. So what are the ungodly like? Look what he says here. The ungodly are like the chaff which the wind drives away. In other words, when you've gathered the fruit from the wheat and you've only got what what's left is really not worth much. You just let the wind blow that out, blow it away. And so the, the ungodly will just be blown away as it were. Um, and then he says also that the ungodly uh, will, will not understand, uh, or will not stand, I'm sorry, in verse five. We've already said that. They will not stand, and they will perish forever. Okay? So, listen, friends. I hope that you want to be a tree. You want to be strong in the Lord. There's some good advice for you here in Psalm chapter 1. How to be a tree. Listen, if we can help you, we want to. I, I would uh, help you any way that I could. Um, you message me here on Facebook. I'll be glad to carry on a conversation with you through messenger uh, talk with you by phone I'll give you my number if you ask for it I'll be happy to visit with you if you're somewhat local um, and we would love to minister to you at Burns Baptist Church we've got a great faith family there uh, we're trying to grow and be strong in the Lord we love God we love people we love the Word of God and God is blessing us and we would love for you to be a part of our faith family so uh, we invite you to join us if you can, as soon as you can. And until then, we pray that you will know and love and serve and follow hard after the Lord. Thank you. Amen.